Hello, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 6.4, common denominators and equivalent fractions. Please pause to write the lesson number and title in your notebook. Today's lesson objective is to find a common denominator to write equivalent fractions. Please pause to write the lesson objective in your notebook. All right, fifth graders, ready to jump in with the unlock the problem. Today we're talking about common denominators. Common denominators is a very important concept when we're talking about fractions. A denominator is the bottom part of a fraction. The top part is called a numerator and the bottom part is called a denominator. And common means that they have the same thing. We need common denominators anytime we are going to add or subtract fractions. So today we're going to talk about how we can make common denominators. Let's begin by reading the unlock the problem. Sarah planted two one-acre gardens. One had three sections of flowers and the other had four sections of flowers. She plans to divide both gardens into more sections so that they have the same number of equal sized sections. How many sections will each garden have? We can use a common denominator or a common multiple of two or more denominators to write fractions that have the same part of a whole. So one way that we can do this is to multiply the denominators. So if we look here in the one way, we have one garden that's split into three, like it said, and we have one garden that's split into four. But we want to make them all be the same. So one way to do that is to multiply them. So we could multiply three times four, and that is 12. And that means that both numbers can become 12. So I can split my threes into three, four parts, and then I would have 12 equal pieces. I could also split my fours into three parts each, and now I have 12 over here as well. So let's look at the record section. It says multiply the denominators to find a common denominator. The common denominator of one third and one fourth is 12 because three times four is 12. Then we would write those as equivalent fractions using the denominator. So if I have 12. Remember this from last year, that whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So if I multiply the 3 on the bottom times 4, that means I have to multiply the 1 on the top by 4. So 1 times 4 is 4. So I get the fraction 4 twelfths. Now let's do the same thing with the 1 fourth. I multiply the 4 by 3, which means I have to multiply the top times 4. 3. So 1 times 3 is 3, and 3 times 4 is 12. So 1 third is equal to 4 twelfths, and 1 fourth is equal to 3 twelfths. So both gardens will have 12 equal sections. Another way to find a common denominator is to make a list of the multiples of that number. When we think common denominators, we want to think bigger numbers, not smaller numbers, because in order to get smaller, we would need to divide, and we don't want to divide fractions. It's easier to multiply. So let's make a list of some of the numbers that 3 and 4 have in common. We're using the same examples from above. So counting multiples means we're counting by that number. So we started out 3, 6, 9, then we have 12, then 15 then 18, 21, and 24. Let's do the same thing for 4. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, and 32. 
2. Now we want to circle the things they have in common. They both have 12 in common, and they both have 24 in common. We could use either one, but we commonly want to use the smallest one. So we're going to use the 12. It says, use one of the common multiples as a common denominator, and then write equivalent fractions. So we're going to use 12. So we're going to make both denominators 12, and now we need to figure out what number goes on top. So we have the same like we did before. If we multiply the bottom times 4 in order to get 12, then we need to multiply the top times 4. So 4 times 1 is 4. And the same thing with the 4. In order to get 4 to turn into a 12, we multiply by 3. And whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So 3 times 1 is 3. So both gardens could have 12, or the other number that they have in common would be 24. For the sake of practice, let's write these fractions as 20 fourths. So if I had 1 third and I wanted to make it something over 24, then I would think, hmm, what do I multiply 3 by to make 24? Well, 3 times 8 is 24, and whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So that means 8 24ths. And if I was going to do the same thing with 1 fourth, and turn that into a 24. Then I would multiply 4 times what gave me 24? Oh, that's a 6. So I multiply the top times 6. 1 times 6 is 6. So my other equivalent fractions would be 8 24ths and 6 24ths. Notice that they have the same number on the bottom. That's important because that means they have common denominators. Good job so far, fifth graders. We have one more example to do. This example says we want to find the least common denominator. Sometimes you'll hear this called the LCD, or the lowest common denominator. When we find the lowest common denominator, it helps us out with fractions because when we get into simplifying fractions, if answers are already in their lowest common denominator, then we will have to do a lot less simplifying. So for this example, it says we're going to find the least common denominator of 3 fourths and 1 sixth. In order to find out what the least common denominator is, we're going to count the multiples of these numbers. So let's count by fours. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. Now let's count by sixes. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, and 36. Now let's circle the things they have in common. They have in common the number 12, and they have also in common the number 24. But remember, we want to find the lowest common denominator. So that means that our lowest common denominator is going to be 12 because it's the smallest number that they have in common. Once we find the smallest number that they have in common, we want to make an equivalent fraction. So we're going to change 3 fourths into something over 12. In order to do that, we need to know 4 times 3 gives us 12. And whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So if I multiply the bottom by 3, I have to multiply the top times 3. 3 times the 3 we're multiplying by is 9. So my equivalent fraction is 9 twelfths. Then I have 1 sixth. In order to change a 6 into a 12, we need to multiply by 2. And if I multiply the bottom by 2, I have to multiply the top by 2. So 1 times 2 is 2 and 2 times 6 is 12. So these two numbers, written as equivalent fractions with common denominators, is that 3 fourths is equal to 9 twelfths, 
and 1 sixth is equal to 2 twelfths. This is kind of a hard topic, and we'll be continuing to practice this in class tomorrow. Great job so far, fifth graders. Today's lesson activity is the first problem in the share and show on your page, right underneath where we left off. It says, find a common denominator of 1 sixth and 1 ninth, and then rewrite the pair of fractions using the common denominators. So it says, for this example, we're going to multiply the denominators to find a common denominator. So if I multiply 6 times 9, I get 50. 4. 54 is not the lowest common denominator, but it is a common denominator. So now let's go ahead and think about how we would rewrite these. In order for me to turn a 6 into a 54, then I would need to multiply by 9. And if I multiply the bottom by 9, I have to multiply the top by 9. 1 times 9 is 9. And now let's try our other fraction. In order to change a 9 into a 54, we would have to multiply by 6. And if we multiply the bottom by 6, we have to multiply the top by 6 in order to keep it equal. 1 times 6 is 6. So my equivalent fractions would be 9 54ths and 6 54ths. I did most of the work for you on this lesson activity, but you need to make sure everything is written down correctly because this is where we'll start at the teacher table. Great job, fifth graders.